welcome everyone today we are going to start our journey uh, of the coming two weeks in which we'll learn all that is to know uh, about tuberculosis mainly childhood tuberculosis in the coming two weeks over a course of six lectures so today we are going to discuss mainly on the introduction and the pathogenesis of childhood tuberculosis uh, as uh, you all may be knowing we recently celebrated the world tuberculosis day that is on 24th of march every year it is celebrated and the theme for this year is yes we can end tb so the purpose of today's lecture and the coming lectures is that only by learning about tuberculosis by being up to date about the diagnosis and management and other things about tuberculosis we can actually achieve this goal of ending tuberculosis so our the outline of this lecture will be we will discuss the differences of pediatric tuberculosis and adult tuberculosis. We will discuss the risk factors of pediatric tuberculosis. We will discuss the basic pathogenesis of pediatric TB and the fate of the tubercle bacilli. That is a very important favorite questions or question of uh, the examiners in uh, undergraduate and postgraduate level. We will uh, learn some eponymous foci in pediatric tuberculosis that often come in the exam. And we will discuss what is Walgreen timetable of tuberculosis. So if we take all the cases of childhood tuberculosis all over the globe, India contributes 33%. That means one third of all the cases of childhood tuberculosis while the rest of the world contributes two thirds. So we, it's uh, obvious why it is important for us pediatricians of this country to know about childhood tuberculosis. So why and how pediatric TB is different from adult TB? First thing is, the pediatric TB is more easily detected in a chest radiograph. That, uh, that's why the pediatric tuberculosis, the main diagnosis depends on the chest radiograph. While the adult tuberculosis is more easily detected by testing the sputum. So if we go back a few years, we can see that the main diagnostic modality that we focus on by, for diagnosing adult tuberculosis is sputum smear examination. And the pediatric patients are very small, so it is very difficult to bring up sputum. They, can, they don't cooperate much and even if they cooperate, they are not able to bring up adequate amount of sputum for spear examination. On the other hand, adult patients, they usually very easily bring up the sputum which is needed for smear examination. Next is, if we take all the cases of pediatric tuberculosis, we very often get a positive contact history with another case of opener pulmonary tuberculosis. But in adult patients, we don't get that. We don't get a positive contact history very often. Uh, so there is a, if we base our diagnosis on uh, the presence of contact history, we may miss some cases of adult tuberculosis. But in pediatric tuberculosis, that is very often present. And the risk of progression from infection to disease is very high in pediatric patients. If an adult gets exposed to tubercle bacilli for the first time, there is a very low chance that the person will get a disease but that is not so in case of pediatric patients. So that's a important, that's an important preventive aspect. And the risk of extra pulmonary tuberculosis is only 15% in adult patients, but it is 30% in pediatric patients. Another difference is uh, um, in case of pediatric patients, only one to 15% are smear positive and 10 to 50% are culture positive. But in adult patients, smear positivity is almost 50% and the culture positivity is almost 90% and the pediatric TB is possi bacillary that means the bacillary load is less that means we can't rely only on smear examination sputum smear examination for the diagnosis of tuberculosis on the other hand adult TB is multi bacillary so that's why we can rely on sputum smear examination because the bacterial load is very high so what are the risk factors for tuberculosis, for TB infection and for TB disease? Infection means uh, the risk of getting the bacilli inside our body. If a person gets exposed increasingly or increased exposure like living in high TB endemic communities or children's, children of families living with HIV, overcrowding, poor sanitation, air pollution, tobacco smoke, all these uh, cause increased exposure of a particular child to tubercle bacilli. Next is source case. If the source case, that means the ch person who is transmitting the TB infection, he has cavitary disease or he has smear positivity, that means higher bacillary load, or he, if he has higher cough frequency and if he has poor cough hygiene and if he has not taken treatment earlier, he has delayed treatment, all those cases increase the risk 
of a person transmitting infection to other people and if there is low no contact screening and if the contact so contact with the source is very close a very close contact and increased duration of contact all these things increase the risk of a particular person for getting tuberculous infection that means the bacilli inside entering inside the body on the other hand what is the risk for tb disease that means the disease actually developing if the child is if the person is young age that means below 2 years or if the person has hiv co infection or if the person has some uh, form of immunosuppression in form of malnutrition or post mesial state or post viral diseases or diabetes all these are conditions of immunosuppressions they increase the risk of a particular person developing tubercular disease next is lack of prophylaxis if a person doesn't take any prophylaxis he will obviously he or she will obviously have increased risk of developing tb disease and obviously if the person is not bcg vaccinated bcg protects against severe childhood tuberculosis so if the person is not bcg vaccinated the risk of disseminated disease with increasing severity will be there so if a particular source case is exposed suppose a person gets exposed to a source case how the things will develop if we see here if we take the mycobacterial virulence as a red dot and if the host immunity as a green dot suppose for the sake of easier discussion if the person ex gets exposed to a source case all the people that are ex uh, that are in contact with the source case will be called as contacts so in that case if the mycobacterial virulence is more than the host immunity that means the virulence is more than the host immunity what will happen there will be infection tuberculosis infection will be there in the person this happens in case of 30% people that means among all the people getting exposed that that means among all the contacts in 30% people the mycobacterial virulence is more than the host immunity and those are the people who get infection on the other hand if the mycobacterial virulence is less than the host immunity that means the host immunity is more what will happen there will be no infection so this happens in 70% patients so we learned that if suppose 100 people get exposed to another open case of tuberculosis so what will happen in 30% of people the mycobacterial virulence is more than the host immunity so they get tubercular infection that means the tubercle bacilli enter inside their body in 70% of cases what cases what happens the host immunity is more than the mycobacterial virulence so there is no infection in those cases now coming to the persons who are infected what will happen obviously when there will be no infection there will be no disease so now coming to among the infected people if the infected people have more virulence than the immunity there will be primary disease primary disease what is the lifetime risk of developing a primary disease lifetime risk is 5 to 10 percent in case of infants it is very high that is 50 percent and in case of toddlers that is 1 to 5 years it is 25 percent but if in other 90 to 95 percent what happens we learned that 5 to 10 percent people develop primary disease so what happens to the other 90 to 95 percent people there is persistent latent infection persistent latent infection means the mycobacteria reside inside the body dormantly looking for an opportunity to get flared up so that is called persistent latent infection so in case of persistent latent infection whenever there is mycobacterial virulence exceeding the host immunity that means suppose the immunosuppression happens due to some viral illness or hiv or uh, malnutrition or something other than that so what will happen to the persistent latent infection it will get flared up so that will cause late reactivation disease so the risk of that is variable but it happens sometimes so this is the fate uh, how a particular person getting exposed to another open case of tuberculosis behaves so now this is actually the most important slide what all the students and faculties and all they need to remember so how the tubercle bacilli behaves after entering the body this is one of the most favorite questions of all the examiners senior examiners all the examiners so we need to understand everyone needs to understand this clearly whenever a pulmonary or laryngeal tb patient coughs sneezes speaks laughs or sings he or she is transmitting tb bacilli into the environment 
in form of aerosols and droplets and all those things so whenever a pulmonary or laryngeal tb basically any case of open tuberculosis coughs sneezes speaks laughs sings anything he is transmitting the tubercle bacilli so what will happen next the tubercle bacilli will enter through the nose and all those things into the airway so what will happen the tubercle bacilli has now entered the airway now it will go and lodge in the lower segments of middle lobe or the upper segments of lower lobe mainly in the subpleural focus it will lodge there it is the most frequent site of lodgement because there is sluggish air flow there in the subpleural area and the most aerated part of the lungs due to the more vertical and wider bronchus right side main bronchus the bacilli goes inside that and it lodges in the lower segments of middle lobe or the upper segments of lower lobe mainly in the subpleural focus it is called primary focus or gone focus the bacilli first enters and lodges there it is called primary focus or gone focus from that what happens the bacilli will now will get drained by the local lymphatics it will drain into the hilar or regional lymph node via the regional lymphatics where it will cause what will where it will be called primary complex that is the first fate the tubercle bacilli first lodges in the primary focus then gets by the draining lymphatics it gets uh, causes a foci or enlargement of the hilar lymph node or regional lymph node where it will cause primary complex this is the first fate second thing from this site the course of infection will depend upon the immune response of the host this happens in all the people who get exposed to the tubercle bacilli but from the this point forward what will happen will depend upon the immune response of the host whether the host immune response is high or many uh, whether the host immune response is good or the host immune response is bad so what will happen if there is go good host resistance or good host immune response what will happen this primary focus will get will cause some inflammatory exudate around the primary focus which will get absorbed and a caseous area is inspissated so what will happen this will cause fibrosis and calcification it heals by fibrosis and calcification local exudate will be there and it will ultimately heal by fibrosis and calcification this is the second fate of the tubercle bacilli this happens when there is good host resistance on the other hand if there is weak host resistance what will happen there will be local multiplication of bacilli local multiplication the bacilli had first lost in the lower segment of middle lobe and the upper segment of lower lobe in the subpleural focus in the surrounding area or in the adjacent area the bacilli will multiply from this multiplied bacilli the bacilli can go anywhere first thing is the bacilli can drain into the one of the adjacent bronchus what it will cause there it will cause it will drain into the adjacent bronchus that will cause endobronchial in, infiltration it will cause endobronchial tuberculosis which will ultimately lead to a cavity formation that is the third fate of tubercle bacilli it will ultimately lead to cavity formation by endobronchial route what it can happen next it can happen into it can infiltrate into the adjacent lobe the lower lobe in this case or middle lobe in this case it drains into other parts of the liver for example if it drains into another lobe it will cause lobar consolidation or destructive caseous pneumonia that is the fourth fate of the tubercle bacilli like it can drain into one lobe that's how it can drain into other parts of the lungs also other all the parts so what it will cause there it can drain into entire lungs and it can cause bronchopneumonia so that is the fifth fate of the tubercle bacilli what it can have cause next it can cause enlargement of local lymph node that lymph node will cause partial obstruction of the neighboring airway causing emphysema or complete obstruction causing atelectasis that will be called the sixth fate of the tubercle bacilli likewise that lymph node can also enlarge and compress the trachea causing strider or it can enlarge and compress the esophagus causing dysphagia that will be the seventh fate of the tubercle bacilli what it can cause more it can drain into from the subpleural focus it can drain into the adjacent pleural space so what it will cause there it can spread into the adjacent pleural cavity and cause a pleural effusion that will be the cause the eighth fate of the tubercle bacilli and uh, after all these things 
this bacilli can invade the local vessels also if it can invade the local vessels it will get spread to anywhere where the blood is draining that means hematogenous spread so what it will cause it erodes into the adjacent vessel and it causes hematogenous dissemination hematogenous dissemination means it can spread into the brain it can spread into the other lungs it can spread into the liver it can spread into the abdomen uh, intestines everywhere that will be called as disseminated tuberculosis so all these are the fate of the tubercle bacilli what happened to revise again the tubercle bacilli came through the airway and lodged in the primary focus all those fates of the tubercle bacilli we saw it can cause primary complex in the regional by causing the regional hilar lymphadenopathy it can heal by fibrosis or calcification if there is weak host resistance it can drain into the bronchus endobronchial tuberculosis causing cavity it can drain into other lobes of the lungs causing lobar pneumonia it can drain into the entire lungs causing bronchopneumonia it can cause enlargement of the lymph nodes which will com compress the neighboring airway by causing either emphysema or atelectasis they can compress the strider uh, they can compress the trachea causing strider or compress the esophagus causing dysphagia they can erode into the or er involve the pleural space causing pleural effusion that can e they can erode into the blood vessels causing hematogenous dissemination okay so to recapitulate again when there will be primary infection of the lung it will cause gons complex so after that what will happen it can get progressed it can get contained if there is good host resistance it will get contained if there is poor host resistance it will progress so how it can get contained either by it can be contained by a treatment or it can naturally heal and all those things can cause latent latent infection in the person also which can which can get reactivated any time when there is a local immunosuppression or generalized immunosuppression on the other hand if the disease gets progress where how it can happen it, it is called as progressive primary tuberculosis or progressive primary disease so what is that exactly it can in progress and involve the regional lymph node or it can progress from the gone focus if it progresses from the gon focus it can cause parenchymal cavitation with intrabronchial spread that is called endobronchial tuberculosis or it can cause contiguous rupture by causing pleural effusion or pericardial effusion or miliary tuberculosis by entering into the blood vessels on the other hand how can it how it can spread from the regional lymph node the regional lymph node can cause airway involvement if there is intrabronchial spread or if there is partial or complete obstruction if there is intrabronchial spread it can cause bronchopneumonic consolidation or bronchopneumonia if the and it can ultimately lead to cavitation so all this is called the fate of the tuberculosis bacillus examiners are very fond of this question they will tell describe or enumerate the fate of the tuberculosis bacillus that means how the tuberculosis bacillus behaves or what happens after the bacillus enters into the body so what is the walgren time table of tuberculosis walgren time table means all of the things we learned just now that means all the things that are happening after the bacilli enters into the body they happen after a certain period of time they don't happen all simultaneously they happen after a certain period of time so that is called walgren time table of tuberculosis so after the bacilli enters into the body it takes 1 to 2 months for immune conversion that means in the initial 1 to 2 months the reactions initial reactions to the bacilli are happening so that time is immune conversion that times usually patient doesn't have any symptoms or if at all the patient has any symptoms very non specific symptoms like low grade fever or mild cough cold like that after the 2 months what happens the primary complex happens in the initial 2 to 3 months primary complex that means the gone focus the draining regional lymphadenopathy all those things we learned after that in the initial 3 to 9 months the local lung complications happen what were the local lung complications pleural effusion intrabronchial tuberculosis and bronchopneumonia sorry lobar pneumonia and bronchopneumonia all those things local lung complications they happen in the initial 3 to 9 months after the invasion by the tubercle bacilli 
plural effusion usually happens in the adolescence but it, it also usually happens in the initial 3 to 12 months after the invasion by the bacilli and this is very important this is the time period for miliary or meningeal tuberculosis that means after a person gets infected by tubercle bacilli the 3 to 12 month period is the initial time or the important time for development of miliary or meningeal tuberculosis this is the most dreaded complication of the tuberculosis infection so this is the time period of developing miliary or meningeal tuberculosis what happens after 2 to 3 years bone tb that means bone tb takes 2 to 3 years to develop what happens after that dermatological tb or the skin tb skin tb happens 5 to 10 years after the infection and the last is renal tuberculosis renal tuberculosis happens after 10 years that means the initial part after the infection of a tubercle bacilli initial period is mainly important for local lung complications and miliary or meningeal tuberculosis bone tb skin tb and renal tb those all happen after a long long time and the renal tb is the last thing to develop this is called the walgren timetable of tuberculosis so let's learn some eponymous foci of tuberculosis what is gone focus as we learned gone focus is the primary focus in lungs mainly seen in the upper part of lower lobe or the lower part of upper or middle lobe this is the primary focus in the lungs that means after the tubercle bacilli enters inside our body it goes and lodges there it is the gone focus or primary focus. What is gone complex? Gone complex refer to the gone focus and the surrounding lymph node are the draining lymphatics. Three things. Gone focus, that means the primary focus, surrounding lymph node and the draining lymphatics. This is called gone complex. On the other hand, what is the rank complex? Rank complex refers to gone complex which has undergone fibrosis and calcification. That means if the person's immunity is intact or the person has good host response, the primary complex or the primary uh, focus gets healed by fibrosis and calcification. That is called rank complex. What is Simon focus? Simon focus refers to hematogenous spread to the apex of upper lobe of lungs resulting in post primary infective lesion. That means suppose the tubercle bacilli entered inside the body and lost and caused the gone focus and the gone complex. After that suppose if the person's immunity is low the tubercle bacilli can invade into the vessels. In after invading into the vessels it can de get disseminated to anywhere where the blood is going. So including one of that area is the apex of the upper lobe of the lungs. So if by hematogenous spread the tubercle bacilli gets spread from the gone focus to the apex of the upper lobe of the lungs it will cause Simon focus. What is Asman focus? It is the infraclavicular focus or infiltrate caused by reactivation of Simon focus. Suppose the Simon focus gets latent infection or the Simon focus infection is suppressed. In the future something causes the immunity to decrease. Something causes the immunosuppression of the person. That latent infection can get reactivated. So this in a reactivation of latent Simon focus causing reactivation in the infraclavicular area mainly is called Asman focus. What is Pulse lesion or Pulse nodule? Pulse lesion refers to isolated lesion of chronic pulmonary TB in the apex of the lungs. In the apex of the lungs, if there is chronic pulmonary TB that is an isolated lesion, that is called Pulse lesion. So the important thing to learn here is, in the apex of the lungs, we can get three things. Simon focus, Asman focus, Pulse lesion, all are seen in the apex of the lungs. If that focus is during the primary infection period has been caused by a hematogenous spread and mostly that hematogenous spread happens in a immunocompromised person only that is called Simon focus. If that Simon focus is suppressed or becomes latent by something and later gets reactivated that is called Asman focus and if that becomes chronic pulmonary tuberculosis and that is the isolated lesion in the lung apex that is called Pulse lesion. What is Uyghur focus? Uyghur focus refers to the caseating metastatic focus in the wall of a pulmonary vein. In the primary focus that we learnt, there will be some adjacent vessels. So if that adjacent vessel is a pulmonary vein and that pulmonary vein wall is infiltrated by this metastatic tubercle bacilli, it will cause a caseating necrosis there. So that will cause, that will cause, that will be called as Uyghur focus. 
व्हाट इज रासमसन एन्युरिज्म पल्मोनरी आर्टरी एन्युरिज्म एडजसेंट टू और विद इन द ट्यूबरक्युलर कैविटी कैविटी सपोज देयर इज एंडोब्रंकियल स्प्रेड एंड इट कॉजेस और फॉर्म्स ए ट्यूबरक्युलर कैविटी सो इफ विद इन दैट ट्यूबरक्युलर कैविटी देयर इज ए पल्मोनरी आर्टरियल एन्युरिज्म दैट विल बी कॉल्ड एज रासमसन एन्युरिज्म दैट मींस पल्मोनरी वेन विगर्ड फोकस पल्मोनरी आर्टरी रासमसन एन्युरिज्म व्हाट इज रिच फोकस to become rich we need our brain so we, that's how we can remember this rich focus refers to the tb granuloma in the cortex of the brain that ruptures into the subarachnoid space causing tubercular meningitis what is simons focus tubercular focus in the liver is called simons focus and what is pots disease i think everyone knows this the arthritic tuberculosis of the spine that is called pots disease so these are all the eponymous foci, foci in the tubercular disease so let's recapitulate again what are the tubercular foci gone focus that means upper part of lower lobe or the lower part of middle lobe in the subpleural area is called gone focus what is rank complex if that gone focus gets healed by fibrosis and calcification including the draining lymphatics and the regional lymph node that is called rank complex what is called simon focus this gone focus gets hematogenously disseminated into the apex of the lungs and that will be called as simon focus what is pulse lesion chronic pulmonary tb in the apex of the lungs isolated that is called pulse lesion what is wigert's lesion wigert's lesion is the pulmonary vein involvement by the tubercular foci what is rasmussen aneurysm pulmonary arterial involvement what is asman focus asman focus refers to the reactivation of the latent simon focus what is rich focus it is tubercular granuloma in the brain what is simon focus simon focus refers to the tubercular focus in the liver and what is the pots disease pots disease refers to involvement of the spine so if we represent the primary infection by a yellow dot and the post primary or reactivation disease by a red dot the primary infection usually involves this part what is this part lower part of upper lobe and upper part of middle lobe and sometimes in the upper lobe on the other hand what is which areas are involved in the post primary or reactivation disease mainly in the upper part of upper lobe and the upper part of lower lobe those are the areas mainly involved in the post primary or reactivation disease so what are the key learning points in today's lecture pediatric tb is a possibacillary tb possibacillary disease that means the bacillary load is very less it is more easily detected on a chest radiograph we will discuss that in subsequent lectures it poses various diagnostic challenges than adult tb because it is significantly different than adult tuberculosis the primary pulmonary involvement is called progressive pulmonary disease or it can get disseminated uh, it can cause disseminated tuberculosis if the host response or the host immune response is very weak dermatological and renal, renal manifestations occur very late mainly 5 to 10 years after the invasion of by the uh, pulmonary uh, tuberculous bacilli and miliary tuberculosis and meningeal tuberculosis are the early and dreaded complications they occur within 3 to 12 months of the invasion by the bacilli and they are the most dreaded complications of tuberculosis so if you liked uh, today's lecture please press a like share and subscribe and we will uh, uh, upload the subsequent lectures every 2 to 3 days there are 6 to 7 lectures uh, planned for tuberculosis and we'll complete all that in the subsequent 2 weeks thank you